1948, American scientist Edwin Land unveiled the first Polaroid camera, setting the precedence of what it means to have instant images. It is evident that we're living in a period in which our experience of time and space is radically shifting and changing at an exponential pace. The ways we consume and circulate images aided by technological advancements affect how we experience time. The complete circle of the annular solar eclipse lasted about two minutes. Yet during this short time span, I was those restless individuals scrolling through online videos of how an eclipse looks like. One child in particular asked his parents, why was it taking so long? When I think of the idea of an instance, I'm referring to the way we consume and produce images today. Our engagement with others is divided by a screen, and our somatic experience of our environment altered by virtual reality. The moment when the circle is closed represents to me the moment when my mind is free to create and my body uninhibited to express. I'm a near abstract painter. The series Breeze Blocks reveals the richness and wealth of minimally treated breeze blocks in modern architecture and their surreptitious conversations with light and shadow. Also known as cinder blocks, they are the skin of a building. The blocks are stacked one upon the other to let breeze through while casting dappled light into the interior. This modular arrangement forms a permeable barrier between the interior and exterior. For me, painting should be as dexterous and quick as throwing a skipping stone over water. If not the act of painting itself, then the way it should be viewed. There is no one way though. If I can quantify speed and breaths, then each painting is done in one breath. I am very fascinated by the complex overlapping worlds of ancient astronomy and mythology. The works I'm making are almost like star maps. They point to specific positions of constellations at that very moment in time. I'm interested in how symbols are used as a way of communicating visually. And I see a parallel in how hieroglyphs are formed and used. And I'd like to think the cosmos are lending a hand in the way I make my artistic decision. The folds of the metal correspond to the positions of constellations. The trajectories of these objects, their movement or speed, are measured using these fixed points in the sky. My work revolves around the unconscious and the act of pain negotiation. It's how I see pain on an unconscious level. It comes out to haunt us in strange and different ways. I've been often asked, did something happen to make you choose this topic? But my interest was first spurred by a quote from Fuyuko Matsui. Pain is something we can sympathetically feel, a condition pointing to a more intuitive realm of communication. I recognise that pain is a universal language to living things. We all know the concept of pain in similar ways. To me, it's extremely important to live with and heal from it. My pursuit to make work regarding pain as an act of articulation toward the viewer, so that they too will be able to negotiate something in their own way. For me, collage deals with meanings that emerge from gathering the fragments. Unwanted clothes, scrap fabric, and industrial safety materials come together in my Fire Blanket series. The title refers to woven fiberglass blankets used to extinguish fires. The work juxtaposes the familiarity of patchwork blankets with undertones of emergency. The piece, Seek and Destroy, involves building a composition with layers of paint and collage before slashing the surface to reveal its metallic base. This violent gesture is mirrored by the target motif, 
which transforms the viewer's gaze into a fireer's. Vulnerability is at the heart of my practice, and I resonate with a quote by the American artist Jasper Johns. He said that art has to be not a deliberate statement, but a helpless one. It has to be what you can't avoid saying. I like to think that things have their own private lives, their own relationships with other objects that I'll never know about. When I work with them, like for example, extracting a word or putting them with colour on a surface, I remind myself that it is not what I want them to mean, but how they react with each other. My observations are just one perspective of many. It's also kind of like a protest against how we deem ourselves as superior when we interact with the things around us, how we consume, how we see things as capital for our use. Painting has a long history, so I think it has its own language already. Within a canvas, I can construct a world with its own logic. I don't have to build from scratch. This series on canvas takes text from names of cultivars or plants. Cultivars are not naturally occurring, but what people grow and select for traits to sell commercially. They give romantic names to these cultivars, and sometimes that contributes to us desiring the cultivar more. <laughs>